I can't even begin to tell you how cold it was in Dallas, Texas this week. I'm going to tell you about it right after this. So many of you may have been keeping up with the news and you've seen about this winter storm here in Texas and I got caught right in the middle of it. So here's kind of how it all went down. I think it was Monday. Um, I lost power and uh, no power in the house and it went for, I believe, 18 hours before I got any power back at all. So overnight, there was zero power. And I believe it got down to, I don't know, eight or nine degrees that night. Now, I do have gas heat in the house, but without the electricity, uh, you can't blow the air. I had gas. I had gas stove and, you know, I could have heated up water if I needed to. <laughs> but uh, it was, it started getting pretty cool. I went ahead and slept at home that night. In fact, I slept at home every night. I never did sleep away from home because I was concerned about pipes breaking or, you know, leaks, things of that nature. I never knew if I needed to go out and turn off, you know, turn off the water main or something like that. So I went ahead and stayed at the house. Well, the first morning I woke up, it was 44 degrees in my bedroom. And that was an interesting night because I just kept adding blankets. And I finally got to where I think I had four layers on top of me. Plus, I was wearing my little wool cap to kind of keep my ears warm. It was that cold. I don't know if you've ever, some of you guys are campers. You probably sleep outside in a sleeping bag in weather worse than that. But I never had done that. So it was uh, pretty, pretty sketchy. Uh, didn't get any power. I did have water. Water. I kept the water dripping, you know, on the the whole time. And of course, you had these incredibly terrible uh, traffic accident, uh, like a hundred and some car pile up on one of the highways, killed six or eight people, and uh, just a real tragedy. I mean, and it just they're just not equipped. To handle this kind of weather here in Dallas Fort Worth. Now we've had ice storms in the past and we've had I would say comparable weather to this. I honestly didn't think the weather was that bad to cause all of these power outages. Um, somebody's going to have to resign or get fired or something over this. There's no excuse for so many people to be without power for so many days. That's a whole nother story. I'm not going to get into it. I've got a lot of opinions about it, and it's just not important to go into right now. The second morning, I did get about an hour to an hour and a half of power the night before I went to bed on the second night of this. And it got my, you know, my heater got the temperature up to about 65 degrees, 66 degrees. So by the time, and it did get down to zero degrees outside that night, maybe even lower. But, you know, by the time I woke up, I, I think it was still about 54, 55 degrees in the house. It was tolerable. And what I would do is, I'd, you know, during the day, I would, or, or at night, I would stay in the kitchen and I would turn on all the burners on my gas stove. And I have this uh, cast iron uh, griddle. And it, it really radiates heat well. So I'd put that griddle over two of the burners to heat up the griddle. And it actually put out quite a bit of heat. So when it was, you know, 50 degrees in the house or 45 degrees in the house, I could kind of stand over there and kind of get warm or put my laptop, you know, in the kitchen and do some work there. What little I could do. There was no Internet. We haven't had Internet since Monday. So... This was a, an interesting experience, and like I say, there's really no excuse for the power outages because this isn't the worst. Now, it was colder. It is probably colder than I've ever experienced, but we've had really bad ice storms here in Dallas-Fort Worth before, and we've never lost power. So this is kind of, that part of it's kind of unique. So I guess it might be time uh, to look at getting a whole house generator or something. As far as food, you know, they, they did tell us this was coming and they did say to stock up on food. 
but it doesn't really do any good to stock up on food if you have no way to refrigerate it or cook it if you're without power. Now, I did have gas. I could cook, uh, but I wouldn't have been able to microwave anything or cook anything in the oven because that's all electric. So that didn't really help, but I didn't starve. I had friends um, who uh, had heat, one friend that had heat. He had the, the rolling blackout thing where every 45 minutes his power would go out, then it would come back on had a better energy company. And his house never got below 69 degrees. So we were able, he'd come pick me up and we'd go over to his place and, and uh, we would eat. You know, he had plenty of food, so th that wasn't a big issue. Um, I, I, I almost spent the night over there once or twice, but then again, concerns over broken pipes and leaks and things, I just felt more comfortable staying back here. And I kept thinking the power is going to come back. I kept thinking, you know, they're, maybe they're going to do the rolling blackout thing at my house, and they never did. So I was without power for the better part of three days. And uh, it got back on a couple days ago and has been consistent ever since. Haven't had another uh, outage. But I still didn't have internet. So I just today, it looks like today, I'm getting my internet back in shape. Uh, I tried to upload some videos yesterday. I tried to do some things, couldn't do it. But it looks like today, it, they uh, Frontier finally got the Fios thing working and it looks like we'll have internet. I also, <laughs> interesting story, had a, a, a little bird, sadly, dead little bird on the front porch. One day I went out and saw this little dead bird in the snow. And so yesterday I was going to go out and kind of, you know, pick it up and throw it away, get it off the porch. And it was gone. So obviously some predator had come by and picked up the bird. Now I found some interesting tracks in the snow. I'll put a picture on the screen. Maybe some of you can identify what animal this is that obviously picked up that bird and I guess ate it. We do have coyotes in our area. We also occasionally will get a bobcat, something like that. But I don't know. I can't recognize print, uh, hoof prints or tracks or whatever they are, hooves, paws, whatever. So we basically are almost back to normal. And by the way, throughout this whole period, the streets in our area are, you know, I'd say a few miles radius. Never really got that bad. It was just snow, so it wasn't that slick. We didn't get the ice that some parts of town got. Now, last night, yesterday, the snow, snow melted, and uh, it froze overnight, so I'm sure today there is some ice on the roads, but today it's supposed to get pretty warm, maybe up in the 50s, and it will start melting all this stuff off. And I think by tomorrow, next day, uh, it should actually be riding weather pretty nice, like in the 60s. So in the highs in the 60s. So that's pretty good. So it was just a brief thing. And I know I, I do want to make sure to mention all of you that have sent me uh, emails and messages uh, on YouTube, Facebook, whatever, uh, of concern and asking, how's everything going? What's up? How's the weather? Are you surviving? Um, it really meant a lot to get those messages. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Fortunately, uh, everybody, me and everybody I know is safe. Uh, it doesn't look like, fingers crossed, knock on wood, I hope I don't have any leaks or pipes that broke. I made sure to keep the water running on all the faucets. I also made sure to take the hoses off the hose bibs outside, do that whole thing. But you just never know. I even went up in the attic yesterday because crazy as it seems, we have our hot water heaters in the attic, believe it or not. Everybody in this neighborhood does. I wanted to check those pipes because it can get really cold up in that attic. But all my pipes were insulated. They all looked good. Everything looked fine. I didn't see any leaks. So I think we might have squeaked by on this one. I think we got by okay. Uh, but anyway, again, I wanted to just let you know what the update is. More videos coming on the way. I appreciate all of you uh, that sent messages. And uh, I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage.